Because some of y'all in here thinking about getting married. You not qualified to be motherfucking married, you dumb motherfuckers. You ain't traveled the world. You ain't de date different bitches. You fucked two, three bitches in your life and you want to settle down. Who the fuck raised you? <laughs> you got to travel this world because marriage is a powerful motherfucking thing. Have you heard the vows? Vows are serious. It says for better or for worse. For sickness and health to death do us part. You know why I'm not married? Because I know who the fuck I am. Because if my bitch got sick, I'm taking you to your mama house. I'm not that nigga. I'm not the nigga to be taking you to the doctor and trying to figure shit out. All I'm going to be thinking about is out of all the holes I fucked in the world, I got the bitch that got sick. This ain't motherfucking right. I got the bitch that got sick. This ain't fair. Because I built up a cold roster by 2019 over my 60 years, 60 something years on this earth. And by 2019, I had some of the baddest bitches a nigga could ever think of. But when that COVID came, it knocked my holes off they square. Because I was fucking with bitches that didn't have strong immune systems. I was fucking with bitches that didn't have the antibodies. So one of my holes died during COVID, you know? Now, I'm a player, you know? If I fuck any nigga, girl, nigga, I, I, take, I buy the nigga something. I think it's wrong that I'm fucking your girl and you don't get a few things. You know? Y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. No, I'm for real. I think it's fucked up. Don't fuck any nigga bitch in here. And we fly out of the country, Turks and Caicos, nigga. Motherfucking London, Paris. When we come back, we coming back with gifts. For you. So during the pandemic, one of my hoes died. And we had to have a funeral on Zoom, you know, because the funeral was backed up. You couldn't get in there. You know? And I didn't know she died, so I'm jogging one day, and one of her girlfriends rolled up on me, blowing a horn, and said, TK, did you hear? I'm like, what? She said, Kathy died. I said, get the fuck out of here. I said, I've been calling. I wonder what happened. She wasn't answering my call. I thought a nigga found my number and blocked me. She said, no, so she gave me the link, and I went to bed sad. Woke up the next morning, took a nice shower, came downstairs, put my name on Zoom, and all of a sudden, her bitch-ass husband want to be emotional this fucking day. He going to get up during the service and go talk to the funeral director and say, look, there's T.K. Kirkland on Zoom. He's been having an affair with my wife for 15 years. Is there any way we could block him? <laughs> and the funeral director was like, look, I embalm people. I don't block nobody. <laughs> so this nigga going to come back, take his jacket off, and throw it over the camera. Nah, don't laugh. I bought that nigga that jacket. In 2000 motherfucking five, I thought it was motherfucking disrespectful. So I started jogging a lot, because that's how I stay young and, you know, take care of myself. And I, I stay moisturized, you know. <laughs> so I picked up a bitch at a park named Beecher, 72 years old, nigga. You know? Now you laugh. Beecher's got her shit together. She took care of her body. She looked good. And when I sat down, when you talk to older women, the conversation is different, young men. You know, as soon as I sat down, I said, excuse me, who's your phone provider? <laughs> and she says, I'm with AT&T. I said, I'm with AT&T too, but because of my age, I'm thinking about downsizing. She said, who you about to rock with? I said, consumer cellular. She said, you know what? I'm thinking about rocking with them too. Would you like to come over for dinner tonight? I said, I sure would. Now I went home and took a nap, you understand? Now most young people think when an OG take a nap, we, we old. No, nah, nigga, we know how to manage our motherfucking time. Now Beatrice is 72 years old. I'm in my 60s. We know we fucking tonight. Ain't no time to get to know each other because tomorrow ain't promised us. <laughs> so I took a nap, nigga, and woke up, put on my, but took a nice shower, and I'm like, what kind of cologne can I represent my generation? You know? <laughs> so I know that y'all got Tom Ford and East St. Laurent, nigga, but I broke out the old spice on this bitch, nigga. <laughs> took the top off, put that on my two fingers, and popped it on my motherfucking neck and took some Johnson's and Johnson baby powder, threw it on my chest, and put it on my balls and made sure I opened my legs and went left to the right to make sure the powder get both the motherfucking balls. You young niggas don't know nothing about that shit, nigga. You don't know nothing about that, you know? And when I pulled up in the driveway, she came up with this nice, sexy dress on, and she said, would you like to eat? I said, I would love something to eat. So we had asparagus and baked fish. It was very tasty. It was very delicious, you know? So we sat in there talking, and we, after we ate, I helped her put the... Um, the dishes in the dishwasher. And we went into the living room 
And she said, would you like to watch Ozark? I said, I would love to. Oh, my God. And I know she had a bottle of Louis XIII on the counter. I said, is that Louis XIII? She said, it sure is. I said, would you mind if I have a sip for you, Louis XIII? So Louis XIII is about $305 a shot if you know about alcohol. I know I poured about $1,200 worth of motherfucking Louis XIII. So we sat on the couch and shit, and my sock game is cold. And let me put you young niggas up on game. See, everything about you under your clothes got to be motherfucking important. Your underwear got to be just as important as your motherfucking cologne. Because if your sock game is fucked up, then you're not taking care of your motherfucking self. So let me put you ladies up on some game. If a nigga take his shirt off and he got a tank top on and is loose around the chest area, that nigga had that on for a couple days. If he takes his pants off and his underwear is real wrinkly, that nigga had that on for a while. And if a nigga ever come out of the bathroom to fuck you and he got his socks on, stop him and say, let me see the bottom of your socks. Look at him in his eye and say, let me see the bottom of your socks. And watch that nigga dig go down. Why you want to see the bottom of my motherfucking socks? <laughs> it's so important. So we sitting in the living room and I got my arm around because I ain't going to waste no time. And I, I kissed her on the neck and I knew it was going to be a nice evening because the bitch said, hmm. And I, I said, nigga, it's about to be on like a motherfucker up in here. So I dropped my phone by accident, when I went down, I came around to try to put my tongue on a pussy. So when I came around, I took the legs back. She said, oh, stop, my knee hurt. I just had surgery. Don't push it back too motherfucking far. I'm like, damn, she said, but you could come upstairs to my bedroom. So we walking up the steps. I got my dick card and my, my sweats down to my ankle. She walking with the limp. And when we walked into the bedroom, I fell in love, young niggas. Let me tell you, these old bitches got their shit together, you hear me? Because when I walked in the bedroom, this bitch had the sleep number mattress, nigga. <laughs> this bitch had the sleep number mattress. These young bitches don't know nothing about no sleep number mattress. And I fucked the hell out of beaches on that motherfucking mattress. And I don't know where these old bitches get them 9,000 thread count sheets from, nigga. But after you fuck them, it's like little people massaging your back and your calf muscle. When you pull the blanket up to go to sleep, you smell all the downy and the fabric softener. These young bitches don't know about downy and motherfucking fabric softener, you know? So I went in the fetal position. So about 3.30, she started elbowing me. And she said, Mr. Kirkland, you know, it wasn't TK no more. She called me Mr. Kirkland because out of respect, because the dick was fabulous, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> So I looked over my shoulder, I said, yes, baby. She said, what number you want on your side to matches? I said, nigga, you smooth than a motherfucking nigga. And I looked over my shoulder, I said, I'll take 73, baby. I'll take 73. You know? And old bitches, when they love you and they got their shit together, they get up early in the morning, cook a nigga muffins, nigga. Listen to me. These young bitches don't know nothing about no motherfucking muffins. And Beaches brought them muffins upstairs and laid that shit right on the nightstand and was, had a mitten on and was waving the aroma in my motherfucking nose. I'm trying to keep my eyes closed because I know she's staring at me. I'm trying to pretend that I'm asleep, but I couldn't hold my eyes closed anymore. So when I opened them, she was staring dead in my motherfucking eye. So I had to act like I was asleep. I was like, I said, Beaches? And she said, yes. I said, is there muffins? <laughs> And she had on this 1800 fucking roll. I had never seen a roll this big before. And the bitch had one of them big pockets, big as a thigh. And the bitch put her hand in the pocket and brought out a cup of hot chocolate on a motherfucking saucer with whipped cream and laid it on the nightstand, nigga, and had cursy chips in her hand and crushed that motherfucker all on the hot chocolate. Nigga, I don't know about y'all. Give yourself, give Beaches a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Give Beaches a round of applause.